All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that little sneak peek, that little intro to the quarterfinals. CWO Premier went down just this last weekend. We are getting so close to the championship war, just a couple weeks left until we get there. These are the four matchups, guys. Swarm Synergy uh, versus Grumpy Old Men, Gunma Samurai, who took on Forbidden, Power CLC taking on Division Rivals, CWC Brawlers, and King Jeffrey, who took on none other, none other than last season's finalist, FYSB. Without further ado, guys, let's go ahead and jump right into the first matchup. We're going to take a look at Power CLC and the CWC Brawlers War. All right, guys, the very first matchup that we are taking a look at is the Power CLC versus the CWC Brawlers War, and that is exactly what this was, a brawl to get to the semifinals. Power CLC is going to be going there, as they did have a very solid five-star victory over CWC Brawlers, the final, 85-80, to 80, and this is exactly how Power CLC did it. Uh, they did have the only Town Hall 10 uh, three stars of the war. They picked up three 10v10s. Uh, they did go 3 for 13 on their 10v11 game, which is actually an improvement uh, going into uh, week 10 or week 9, week 10, week 11, uh, where they had been really struggling in the 10v11 game. Uh, they did clear 3 out of the 4 uh, Town Hall 11s that CWC Brawlers had on the map in this 4-10-16 uh, breakdown. And as far as their dip game, uh, they did go 7 for 8, only having one dip fail. Uh, they went ahead and used all their Town Hall 11 attacks, dipping down on the 10s. Uh, they went ahead and made the decision to leave uh, one of those Town Hall 11s only one starred. It was not an issue considering they had a five-star victory over CWC Brawlers. We'll go ahead and break down their stats for you guys uh, before we watch one more attack in the background. Uh, CWC Brawlers unable to execute a 10v10 uh, here in the quarterfinals. Uh, they did go... On their 10v11 game, they did a little bit better. They only used, they used two less attacks, but they also only cleared three out of uh, the four Town Hall 11s that Power COC had on the map. Uh, again, they did go three for 11 there. And on their dip game, they went six for seven, so they cleared one less Town Hall 10. Uh, one of those Town Hall uh, 11 attacks went for an 11v11 triple, but only ensured that they got uh, the double uh, on that other Town Hall 11 that their Town Hall 10s were unable to clear. Uh, as far as their Town Hall 9s, uh, they did not have to use any dips. Uh, they didn't have to use any dips uh, from their Town Hall 10s. Uh, Power COC hitting at 64%, having seven scouts on the map, absolutely huge to this victory. And for CWC Brawlers, uh, they hit at 53%. They only had two scouts, so clearly Power COC taking advantage uh, of those Town Hall 9 scouts. Uh, so huge shout out to Power COC's Town Hall 9s, uh, a, a department that they have definitely uh, been performing well in throughout the season. Uh, we'll go ahead and check out uh, this other Town Hall 10 triple uh, from RW coming from power uh, coming from the Power COC side uh, with an incredible Queen Charge Dragon Attack. Absolutely love this. Uh, going to be breaking in here at about uh, 4 o'clock. Going to go ahead and drop down that Rage. And a couple Wizards. Guy brought about 12 Wall Breakers uh, to this attack. You can see all kinds of different walls broken as he is trying to charge all of these air defenses. And pretty much the entire bottom side uh, of this base. And you can see he only has five Dragons uh, that he's bringing in the camps. Uh, enemy Queen is down. Uh, as his queen is going to be rounding uh, the 6 o'clock quadrant of this base, taking out that archer tower and just making her way through this base. Still has a few more wall breakers to drop. Can he go ahead and get that compartment popped? Uh, you'll see he's starting up his drags from about 12 
to 230. That's where these dragons are going to be entering in. Uh, does have a baby dragon that was trimming that trash to ensure that all the dragons go inside. Goes ahead and drops down that rage down there. If you guys can see it uh, down there at the bottom of the base. Ends up getting a successful wall break. Uh, on that wall with those last three wall breakers as he does still have one more air defense left up in the nine o'clock section of this base. And you can clearly see uh, that this base is collapsing on itself, does have balloons taking out that Tesla underneath the town hall and also has balloons in the core helping out the dragons as they approach the second and final Inferno Tower. And this is looking very well, goes ahead and pops Queen ability. And that air defense is firing off on those balloons, but you can see he has way too many dragons left up for the defenses left in this base. Absolutely incredible queen charge, dragon attack from RW, and a big win for Power COC going to the semifinals. All right, guys, next matchup as we move right along here, we have FYSB who took on King Jeffrey here in what was the heaviest breakdown uh, of the quarterfinals. Uh, the breakdown 4 13 18, that's right, a 35 versus 35, and with all kinds of Town Hall 10s on the map, uh, made for a very interesting war and a very competitive war. However, FYSB getting the best of King Jeffrey, FYSB getting the victory, 98 to 95 was the final, a solid three-star victory for FYSB, and here is how they did it. Uh, we'll go ahead and look at uh, their 10v10s, they did have three uh, that they did put up on the board. Uh, as far as their 10v11s, they went four for 13, so they were able to clear all of King Jeffrey's Town Hall 11s with their Town Hall 10s. Absolutely huge in uh, this very competitive war. As far as their dips, they did go seven for eight, so only having one dip fail. And for their Town Hall 9s, uh, they were able to clear. However, uh, they only hit at 58%. Uh, that did allow them five scouts. But when you look at what King Jeffrey's Town Hall 9s did, uh, definitely um, put the pressure on FYSB, seeing as King Jeffrey's Town Hall 9s hit at a remarkable 75%. They had 12 scouts. Uh, which is absolutely huge. However, their heavy hitters were not able to take advantage of those scouts. Uh, they only had one 10v10 triple, uh, so only able to take down one of FYSB's Town Hall 10s. Uh, so again, only having one 10v10 triple. Uh, that was 8%. They hit it uh, 1 for 13. So they had quite a few attempts, uh, but were only able to get one on the board. As far as uh, their 10v11 game, uh, they actually mirrored FYSBs. They did go 4 for 13 as well. Uh, so still definitely above the league average. Uh, so did a very, very good job in that department. Uh, as far as their dips, they did have two dip fails. So when you go ahead and look at the breakdown uh, between uh, FYSB having one dip fail, King Jeffrey getting two, and you have FYSB who had three 10v10 triples, King Jeffrey only having one, that right there made up the three stars, which is what FYSB won by. So again, a very competitive war. A huge shout to both these clans, and especially King Jeffrey. They played a remarkable season. Uh, I believe they had nine, uh, nine wins in a row in the regular season. However, FYSB getting the better of them, uh, and they will be going to the semifinals. We'll go ahead and check out uh, this incredible 10v11 attack. Uh, from Mama Tried uh, from FYSB. As you see, he's bringing all kinds of Valks. Uh, went ahead and trimmed uh, the 3 o'clock section and the 12 o'clock section uh, of this base, entering all those Valks, even bringing Valks in the clan castle. Notice he delayed those a little bit as his regular Valks, or his camp Valks, went ahead and popped all the bombs and all the traps and everything. And you can see right on the town hall is his king, uh, where he still has his ability left. Uh, went ahead and took out that Inferno Tower. There goes his ability. Check out the percentage, guys. At 64% already, still had a baby dragon to go ahead and take out those two elixir pumps. This is going to end at 68%. Huge shout to FYSB going to the semifinals.
All right, next matchup we're going to take a look at is Forbidden versus Gunma Samurai here in the quarterfinals. CWO Premiere Season 3, Forbidden walking away with the victory, the final, 85-84. to 84. This ended up being a very, very close war, a one-star victory, and definitely one of the closest wars uh, considering the performance uh, that both of these clans put up. Uh, this is exactly how Forbidden went ahead and walked away with the victory. One thing I will say is Forbidden put on the pressure or put the pressure on Gunma Samurai very, very early on into this war considering they had two 10v10 triples in the first couple hours. Uh, they went ahead and made the decision to get some scouts in and they were able to execute two 10v10s, adding all kinds of pressure on the Gunma Samurai, uh, Gunma Samurai side. Uh, Forbidden, in total, had four 10v10 triples. Uh, they went ahead and went three for 10 uh, in the 10v11 department. And as far as uh, their dips, they went six for seven. So one of those Town Hall 11 hits, and again, this was a 4-10-16 breakdown. Uh, so one of those Town Hall 11 hits uh, went for a two-star since, since their Town Hall 10s were only, to clear, uh, were only able to clear three out of the four uh, Town Hall 11s that Gunma Samurai had on the map. Uh, so it was very, very close as far as the Town Hall 9s on the uh, Forbidden side hitting at a solid, very solid 76%, uh, which did ensure them 10 scouts. So huge shout out uh, to all the Town Hall levels top to bottom uh, here in this war in the quarterfinals. On the Gunma Samurai side, this is the reason why this war ended up being so close Considering the fact that Gunma Samurai was unable to execute a 10v10 triple, however, they did have an 11v11 triple, the only one in the quarterfinals. Uh, so a uh, huge shout to Gunma Samurai, put up a very, very close match against Forbidden. Uh, for those of you that forgot Forbidden, remember, uh, were undefeated through half of the wars uh, in the season, going through week six without suffering a loss. Uh, but Gunma Samurai did pick up a 11v11 triple. They did not have a 10v10. Uh, they pretty much mirrored uh, Forbidden stats in the 10v11 department. They did go 3 for 11 uh, and as far as their dips, they went perfect. Uh, they did go 7 for 7 uh, so that the difference was the 10v10s. Uh, so if they were able to execute just a couple 10v10 triples, they would have ended up walking away with this victory, and they know that. It was very, very, very competitive. Uh, for their Town Hall 9s, uh, they were definitely outshined by Forbidden in this department, hitting at 59%. Uh, they went ahead and made the decision to go ahead and dip down on a few of Forbidden's Town Hall 9s. However, Gunma Samurai still had 10 scouts from their Town Hall 9s, but again, they were unable to execute uh, uh, a 10v10 triple, and that alone, uh, Forbidden walking away from the quarterfinals, going to the semifinals again. Uh, the final to this matchup, 85-81, to 81. A one-star victory for the guys and girls over in Forbidden. Uh, and again, the breakdown was the traditional premier breakdown being 4-10-16. A uh, huge shout-out to both of these clans. Uh, they have both played an amazing uh, regular season. And it, all these clans making it into the quarterfinals. Uh, huge, huge shout out to all you guys, and definitely, definitely a huge shout out uh, to Forbidden uh, for moving on to the semifinals. They have been a force to be reckoned with throughout the remainder of the season. We'll have to wait and see what happens in the semifinals going down in a couple weeks. Only time will tell uh, which of these clans that we've covered so far will be going to the championship war. Uh, but for now, Forbidden heading to the semifinals. All right, here is the fourth and final matchup 
that we're going to be covering here in the quarterfinals, CWL Premier Season 3. We have Grumpy Old Men who took on none other than Swarm Synergy, by far the hottest clan in Premier. However, Grumpy Old Men walking away with the victory, a very surprising victory, 83 to 82 was the final. Now, what made this even more remarkable is if we look at the pick'em, Swarm Synergy, 100% was the favorite. Literally, if you look at the pie chart, they were 100% favored in the pick'ems. Grumpy Old Men definitely had something to say about that. Swarm Synergy going into this war knew how tough Grumpy Old Men was. So they did not take them lightly. We'll go ahead and break down the stats for you guys to show exactly how this war uh, went down. But Grumpy Old Men getting the best of Swarm Synergy again, the final 83 to 82 in this 411 15 breakdown. Again, Swarm Synergy knowing how tough, how strong Grumpy Old Men is. Uh, they did not take them lightly. Uh, they definitely were outperformed in a few of the town hall levels. Uh, but I'll go ahead and break down the Grumpy Old Men stats for you guys. Uh, as far as 10v10s, uh, like we always start, uh, Grumpy Old Men having four 10v10 triples this war. Uh, so nowhere near uh, what people were thinking as a pushover clan. I've always said, watch out for Grumpy Old Men. I was saying that back in Season 2, and here we are in Season 3 uh, with them going to the semifinals now. Uh, at any rate, they had four 10v10 triples. Uh, they went four for seven. Four for seven on their hit-ups in the 10v11 game. Uh, by far, the best percentage, hitting at 57%. On their hit-ups, no, uh, no clan came near that here in the quarterfinals. Grumpy Old Men, definitely a head above uh, these other clans in the 10v11 game. Uh, however, this is where the war gets very, very interesting. Uh, we'll go ahead and check out their dips, their 11v10 dips. They went 4 for 8. They had 4 dip fails. Now you're wondering, well, if they had 4 dip fails... How did Swarm Synergy lose this war? This is what happened, you guys. Uh, Swarm Synergy, 10v10s. They also had four 10v10 triples. You're probably still wondering, how did Swarm Synergy have as many 10v10 triples as Grumpy Old Men? Grumpy Old Men having four dip fails. Uh, their 11v10 dip fails, having four of them. Swarm Synergy, uh, again, Four 10v10 triples, same as Grumpy Old Men. This was the stat right here, which was absolutely remarkable considering how successful Swarm Synergy has been on their hit-ups. However, Grumpy Old Men's Town Hall 11s had something to say uh, for Swarm Synergy's hit-ups considering they went 1 for 11, only clearing one of Grumpy Old Men's Town Hall 11s with their Town Hall 10s. Again, Grumpy Old Men getting a one-star victory, losing on percentage. But getting the one-star victory over Swarm Synergy. And Swarm Synergy, they went five for six. So they still had a uh, they still had one dip fail, but they did have two 11 v 11 attempts. Uh, one of them ending in a no star, the other one ending in a one star. Uh, so definitely an interesting matchup. This was the matchup everybody was looking at. Grumpy Old Men and Swarm Synergy. Again, Grumpy Old Men walking away with a solid. A solid one-star victory over Swarm Synergy, the clan that had 10 wars won in a row. Only lost their first war uh, they were back in week one. However, Grumpy Old Men had something to say. They are going to the semifinals. All right, guys, here is a quick look at who is going to the semifinals that are going down November 30th. Uh, these are the four clans that have made it. Remember, we started off with 32 clans. These are the final four right here. Grumpy Old Men is going to be taking on Forbidden. And we have Power COC who's going to be taking on last season's finalist, FYSB. Only time will tell who is going to be walking away. Only two clans going to the finals. So make sure you stay tuned to the channel. 
For more CWO coverage coming your guys' way, I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you have not already. As always, this is Riggs from Clashing FFS, and I'll see you in the very next video.